But this time, I'm not alone. After a nationwide call-out, 20,000 of the show's most hardcore fans were up for the challenge. Two of them made the cut. Now I'm going to show them what it takes to really survive in the wild. No way he would ask me to do something crazy. Ah, the noon! I'm going to go vomit now. My first recruit is 39-year-old Joe Resto from New York, and joining Joe is 29-year-old Sean Lacoste from the Midwest. This heli is taking us high into the Purcell mountain range, over 100 miles from the nearest city. My guys are safely down and pumped with adrenaline, and they're going to need it. Good morning, good morning. Okay. So how was that ride for you guys? A little bumpy, a little shaky. How about you, Jay? Well, at 8 in the morning, that's the best cup of coffee you can ever have. <laughs> Woke me up. We've got harness heats, we've got carabiner, that is it. You know, we are minimal, minimal kit. The most important thing I can tell you on this journey is this. Trust me and listen to me. OK, guys, the journey begins. Our first challenge is getting down this 80-foot granite rock face and to the snow gully beneath. I'm going to scale down a mountain with bare grills. I mean, life doesn't get any better than that. I mean, <laughs> it's a story I can tell my grandkids if I, if I live. This rope will be our lifeline and ticket to getting out of these mountains. It's a real deal. This is really happening. <laughs> oh, man. That is not coming out. I can honestly say that I've never been more terrified in my life. These guys have never repelled off anything like this. It will give me a vital insight into their strengths or weaknesses. That's it. Now you're trusting the rope, OK? Trust the rope. Trust back bear. even further. That's it, OK? All right. Now you walk. Just walk back. That's it. Now you're doing it. Oh, Welcome to the mountains. How was it? I seriously consider not doing the rappel. It was pretty scary. I need to recover our rope and get us moving. But first, the big survival priority, water. The dehydration really creeps up on you in the mountains. You don't feel thirsty. Get your bottles out, dig into the snow a bit, get under all of this crust, and then just it out. Eating snow is not a good way to rehydrate. It can cause blisters in your mouth. Yes. Instead, we'll stash the bottles away for later. And by the time you reach the bottom, you'll have water. In the mountains, you've got to drink before you're thirsty. If you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. I need to get the guys motivated again and fast. OK, we're getting more confident with this now. I've got an idea that will give my team a lift. OK, look, we can, um, we can make up some time here. We're going to glissade it. Yes. Glissading is a mountain technique used to cover ground quickly and save valuable energy. I'm going to show the guys which line to take, then give them the all clear. It's all great. And remember, space out. All right, time for a wild ride. The run is over 300 yards long. The guys have got to keep their feet up. At speeds like this, if they dig their heels in, they can be thrown forward and barrel roll off the mountain. Look at this. Steve, I can't believe I just did that on my bottom. It was a wild ride. It's dangerous up here. This isn't a joke. This is as real as it gets. At this altitude, the body needs over a litre of water an hour, similar to the desert. That's good. Look, you see how the snow's melted in there. Yeah. Have a drink, stow them, and we get onto this moraine and try and find somewhere to make camp before it gets dark. As the glacier carves through this valley, it gouges out millions of tonnes of rock. We're at 7,000 feet okay. and surrounded by imposing glaciers. That's bear poo. Is that bear This time of year, the warmer weather brings bears and cougars higher into the mountains. Now you see all the, all the hair, what it's been feeding on. Yeah, it's a good amount of it. We're in the tree line here, so they're going to be bears. Let's keep going. In the last 20 years, 300 people have been killed by large predators in British Columbia. More bear poo. Do you know what? That doesn't make it a bad place to camp. Makes it a scary place to camp. We're in the bear's neighborhood now. Bears aren't territorial. This is purely a sign that they've passed through. I'll go for this. You happy? Happy. OK, 
Okay, first thing we want to do is clear this, and then we need to find some long, long zing, these sort of things. All this timber is avalanche debris. With failing daylight, we don't have to waste time cutting trees. But Joe's got other things on his mind. I'm on a constant bear lookout now. Do you know what? It's so much easier with three people. Bruce branches on top of the avalanche debris are ideal for both roofing and bedding. Of course, at three in the morning, when you're cold, you'd be grateful for every inch of bedding under you. Now, looking like a shelter. I don't want the guys to have to kill for their dinner, so I've brought it with me. Nice. And that... That's nice. It's going to be supper. I'm allergic to bunnies. You're allergic to bunnies. Great. Well, that's one each right. one. <laughs> to cook these critters, we need a fire, and I'm going to get the boys to spark it up. Here, look, come and check this out, Joe. OK, look, we're going to make the fire in here. Got loads of kindling here. I'll go and get some more bigger stuff. Look, really nice crackles. It's going to burn. Over to you. You're good to go. Yes. All right. You got the match? Uh, I got a lighter over. <laughs> Is he gone? So we've got the materials, but can Sean release the magic? I'm having difficulties here. Not bear grills. Oh, I guess we got to eat them raw. <laughs> but it's all about perseverance. Oh, he got it going. It's burning. We've all been looking forward to this, so well done. Now Joe has to gut the hairs. The incision. This is a big deal for yeah. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Meat is usually presented to us in shiny packaging and under electric lights and stores. Your finger in. But unlike the city, eating in the wilderness is all about eating to survive. And then stuff your whole hand all the way up inside it. The gut should be removed as soon as possible. Right in, right in. They contain bacteria that can spoil the meat and even be life-threatening. I, I don't know what's in there. Do you have hand sanitizer after this? I hope, hope you bought some. OK. Good job. What's this? Heart and lungs. All right. Get rid of the lungs, keep the heart. Who wants the heart? I In survival one. situations, you need to eat what you can. All, all the up. heart is packed with protein and iron. OK, share it thirds. Some of the First Nation people will eat the organs of an animal straight after a kill. Oh. Go through the pain. Go on, just, just, just swallow it. Good. There you go, you burn your blood. <laughs> For some Canadian tribes, smearing blood is a symbol of a boy's transition into manhood. Oh. He's now able to provide meat for his family's table. Oh. Is it gone? <laughs> it's still in there. Okay, it's gone. All right. Great job. And we can put that straight on the fire. All the hair is going to burn off, and the fur and the skin will protect the meat. And the guts are throwing off the cliff. Yeah! Today, we've burnt over 6,000 calories, which is the same as running two and a half marathons. Now, this meat is going to put some much needed fuel back in our tanks. Here's to you guys. Mmm, it's good. It's actually pretty good. But, you know, I know it can be a bit gruesome getting stuck into the guts of a hare and stuff and cooking and then eating it just like that. But what you've got to remember. It's doing this sort of thing that allows us to survive out here and be able to live and enjoy this sort of place. It's dawn and we're finally beginning to thaw out around the fire. Definitely need warming up after last night. Frigid. It's wet and it was cold. But the spruce tea would do the job. Spruce tea contains 20 times more vitamin C than an orange. It literally tastes like I have a car freshener in my mouth right now. It's that bad. <laughs> if the guys don't rate the OJ, I'm pretty sure they won't think much of the rest of our breakfast. We're going to forage under rocks and see what grubs and worms we can find. <laughs> oh, man. Beer breakfast. Worms are around 60% protein, which is around the same as a sirloin steak. We are cooking these, right? Less cooking, more scrubbing. OK, look, get these, stick them in the spruce tea, give them a wash off, and then just pull them out. And, you know, probably the easiest way... <laughs> just pop it in. Tastes horrible. <laughs> it's 
thing is moving, man. Go on, Joe. We need energy. <laughs> I, I hate to say it, but you know, I feel really <laughs> off right now. Um, I'm, you know, I'm trying to figure out why I signed up for this whole thing. How's it doing in there? I'm writing your projectile vomit line. <laughs> <laughs> Don't vomit. Try and get it down. You need all your energy. Come on. Wash it down with that. That's not a whimper. It's pure evil. I'm going with that. It's pure evil. Sex on. Good. We're out of here. OK, let you see where we want to get to. Down through this moraine. And you can see where the lake then spills out of the valley. And that's where we want to head down into the valley. We're now well below the tree line and wading through bog known as muskeg. This stagnant muskeg is a perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes. I hate mosquitoes. But Mother Nature has provided a solution. OK. <laughs> Covering yourself with mud puts a protective layer between you and the mosquito. I think I'd rather have the mosquito. <laughs> this doesn't smell too good. <laughs> OK, let's keep going. Good. Further down the valley, we come face to face with a river. Oh, no. <laughs> it's wide and charging with freezing water. This is bustingly cold glacial water this. The way we're going to do this is efficiently and fast, you know, and there is a strong possibility in water that cold, you panic, and that's why we're going to use a rope. Keeping our clothes dry is essential. We need to get warm as soon as we reach the other side. We ready for this? And to do that, we're going to use a bend in the river to our advantage and let the current pivot us from one bank to the other. We'll have to work hard against that current, all right? It's quite strong there. Woo. Very, very cold. Sean, swim's taking you home, all right? Winded and hyperventilating, Sean tries to power through the cold, heavy water. But he's struggling to make any progress. But then he's out. Well, well done, buddy. Well, that's really good. <laughs> this is a massive deal for Sean. He's faced his biggest fear and succeeded. But I can't afford for him to get hypothermia. I need to get Joe across and fast. That's good. That's good. Keep it coming. I'm really proud of my team. The guys have put a huge amount of trust in both me and themselves. They've shown both grit and courage. How does that feel? Oh, let's go home. That was the worst oh, experience I've ever had in my entire life. Oh! OK, oh. come, kit open, dry kit on. All right, I don't want to ever do that again. <laughs> Get jackets on, rope stowed, we need to get moving. Let's go. Yeah, these guys have just done amazingly. They arrived here scared and pretty wide eyed. They've been cold, wet, but they're pumped. And for me, that's what survival's all about. Here she comes. <laughs> that's it, guys. End of the journey, you've done it. We're going home. Oh my god. I'm always a little bit nervous taking people who've got no experience into a very wild place. You know, it's one thing operating on my own, suddenly you've got other people's lives in your hand. You know, he instilled a lot of trust, and I think that was the most important thing I learned on this journey was learn to trust. And again. Nice. Twinkle toes. Tuck your butt. Tuck your butt.